Hi all, welcome to another expanded video. Today we are taking a look at whether Picaram is still on top in expanded. It has consistently been one of, if not the strongest deck in expanded for a long time. And I think that comes just because of its raw strength. Uh, Picaram's attacks are incredibly strong, the full blitz and tag bolt attacks. Uh, but in expanded, lightning types have a lot of support. So we are joining an expanded tournament today on PTCGO, and we'll see how it goes. So on this first turn, my goal is to get a Pokemon in play, and uh, ideally I can get an attack off, but I think actually I went... Oh no, I, I did not go first, they just attached an energy and passed. So ideally I am getting the full blitz off this turn, and I think it's definitely possible. I have the Ultra Ball to get uh, the Picaram, I have an energy attachment, and then I can go ahead and uh, Quick Ball for a draw Pokemon. It can be a uh, Crobat or a Dedenne, I think either one's fine, just depends on what I have in deck. Um, so let's see, I'm going to Quick Ball away the VS Seeker. We could get a Lele as well, but... I think that just drawing cards is going to be better. So why don't we grab the Crobat. Uh, Dedenne is in almost every case better card than Crobat. So if I can get my hand down to one to two cards, then that is a really great way to make the most of my turn one draw. And in theory, I can still Dedenne this turn, but I was able to draw five off of Crobat. So now I'm thinking, how do I actually get, how do I get this? Um, computer search? No, I, I could go for a Floatstone, um, but really I, I just need two pieces is the problem and I can only get one off of the Volkner. So I think what I'm probably going to have to do is Quick Ball for a Dedenne, put the Stadium in play, and then hope that. Yeah, and then hope that I get a Tapu Coco or something else. So it looks like that's what I'm going to do. We'll grab the Dedenne and then Dede Change to draw six cards. and I hit the exact combo I needed. Wow, this is pretty great. <laughs> um, so we will Tapu Koko Dance of the Ancients. We'll put an energy onto both Pikaram. Now I can drop the Vika Volt, Max Elixir, and let's put an energy on the Vika Volt. And then we'll use Escape Rope to bring Pikaram active. I did not use any Electric Powers this turn, unfortunately, so I can't get the turn one KO. But I am going to put lots of energy active, just in case they discard one or use Crushing Hammer. Just allows me to get pretty close, actually, to a Tag Bolt next turn and KO whatever they have on their bench. I know that Senna Scorch V Max has, I believe, 320 HP, which means that with a Tag Bolt, I am getting the KO on the active. So let's see what they have. But yep, looks like they don't have anything. So very quick win with Picaram, and you can see just the, the power that it has to hit that turn one full blitz. All right, and we're on to game two. So we're calling the flip. And we won the flip, which means that we do want to go second. It is not very difficult to get a turn one attack off with Picaram, whether it's the full blitz or paralyzing bolt on Vika Volt. And so we want to make sure that we have every opportunity to do that with a supporter, with Crobat, with the Dene. And this is an okay opening hand. So they attach and pass. Uh, we have the computer search to get a Pokemon and 
So we'll discard one of the two Guzmas plus a Field Blower. And the decision here is between Peak Ram and Vika Volt. Because I have two Max Elixir in hand, I think the Vika Volt attack is a bit more guaranteed. So I'm gonna go with this. Um, it is possible that they're playing uh, Agrow. Oh, you know what? 50 HP on the Oddish. So I am gonna Guzma first to get the knockout on Oddish. Um, and I think this is a good play because if there's no Oddish in play, if we are against Agrow Vileplume, they are item locked and they need to get an Agrow into the active and an Oddish on the bench. Both of those things are going to be pretty hard unless they have the exact combination of cards they need. So they just attach active, use Professor Kukui, and they bench, is that a Pansage? A Pansage. Um, so that means that this is probably just a mono grass deck. This is not a Grau Vile Plume with a, a Rillaboom tech. So they bring some Pokemon out, and now at this point we, we have a pretty excellent hand. Um, so the question is, do I want to try and attack with Pikaram, or if I attach to the active and use that Electra Power, then I can actually get a knockout since that'll do 220 damage to the Rillaboom V. I think that's probably the better play, but we're going to get the Floatstone just to be safe. Um, so we'll attach that active in a moment. Um, we'll go ahead and grab the Pikaram. And then uh, the, the energy attachment should go active as well. So we'll float stone because next turn we will probably want to retreat out of the Vika Volt, ideally, into a full blitz from the Pikaram. And this is not a bad hand, so we will super zap cannon, take the 220 knockout. And then next turn we have energy attachment, we have Tapu Koko uh, with the quick ball, and we have the Thunder Mountain in order to get a full blitz off. So this is looking pretty good for us. So they're going to use uh, Shinotic's ability to go grab another Pokemon. But, oh, Tapu Bulu GX. Oh, throwback. I loved playing Vikavolt and Tapu Bulu. Now they're reunited, but just on opposite sides. Um, Vikavolt V, definitely a, a pretty strong upgrade. <laughs> over the old Vika Volt, just with that item lock attack. I don't love drawing another energy, that will definitely uh, make it harder just to do exactly what we want, but we are still going to grab the Tapu Koko, we still do have the full blitz attack this turn, so we'll put the energy on the Mew and the Picaron, and yeah, they, they know that it's about over, so they offer the concession. And so we are on to the finals. So we won the coin flip. Again, we do want to go second whenever we can. That would have been a pretty solid opening hand if we had had a Pokemon, um, get the stadium in play, get an energy attachment, but we'll shuffle that away and see what we come up with. So this is decent, I think. Uh, we do have the Quick Ball to go grab a Pokemon. We can then double Max Elixir, but they actually just concede the game. Alright, well, there's our 400 coins, our six packs of Chilling Rain, and uh, you saw the strength of Picaram there. And because some of those games ended up being pretty short, I am going to go ahead and show a second tournament I played with Picaram. So we lost the coin flip, but they're going first, which works out for us. This is not a very good opening hand. We have an energy attachment, we have the Picaram, but not much else. Just in case it is like a fighting deck and they're just messing with us with the fire box, um, decided not to bench the other Picaram. And then it's usually good to keep Marshadow in hand unless you 
have a reason to bench it that turn just because it is a little vulnerable with 150 HP in expanded that is very easy to hit and it is such a valuable attacker in the right matchups that you want to save it for the right moment. But it looks like we're up against an expanded Victini VMAX deck and they have the Galarian Rapidash V with that Libra Horn which will do 140 to my Picaram for 2 energy. Pretty strong. So at this point we're in a bad spot. Um, yeah, it will leave the remaining HP as 100, so I'm going to attach an energy to the benched Picaram. Uh, we'll leave the, the active one alone just for now because I do have that floatstone, and really we're just living and dying off the top deck. Um, we need some sort of draw support going into next turn. If we're able to attach the energy, attach the floatstone, Electro Power and then discard our hand will be in a really good spot. So we have two copies of Dedenne, a couple or one Crobat, several Quick Balls and Ultra Balls, and they just have nothing. So there we go. That's exactly what we needed with the Quick Ball. I am going to go ahead and discard the Marshadow since we won't need it in this matchup. And we'll grab the Crobat, I believe, because we can play our hand down to a small size. And then that way it still gives us the option to Dedenne later and dig even further. So we will Electro Power, we'll attach that active, attach to the bench, and then Crobat for 5. I don't want to Guzma just yet because it prevents me from hitting a Max Elixir. Do I have a lightning energy in the discard? If I have a lightning energy in the discard, okay, so I don't, that's unfortunate. Um, in that case, I could still grab this just to get it on the board, but yeah, I don't, I don't love this. So I'm gonna Juniper instead, and we don't hit an energy but we do hit the computer search. So we can computer search for the energy or for the Thunder Mountain Stadium. And we grab another floatstone off the trainer's mail, not bad. Ideally, I would hit a max elixir there so I don't have to use the computer search for an energy card. But we are taking two prizes this turn, which is good. They can still hit us with the Galarian Rapidash, but that's okay. So, um, in terms of discard, I think probably the Field Blower. Because the tools can all be useful. Electro Power, of course, definitely useful. Um, and I am going to grab the Thunder Mountain Stadium. Since I've been talking about an energy this whole time, um, I have already attached for turn. So I needed either a Max Elixir or that Stadium. But the Computer Search gets what we need. And now they are going to do 140 to one of our Picaroms, but all things considered, that is not bad. I will take 140 damage as long as I'm hitting them for 200 plus with either Tag Bolt GX or Full Blitz plus Electro Powers. And it looks like the Galarian Rapidash has 210 HP, so I do need the other two Electro Powers. I have one in hand. Or I would need uh, just one Electro Power plus um, the Tag Bolt. So what we are going to do here... Um, let's see, we have... What do we have to VS Seeker for? Juniper and Guzma. So we can't take the Knockout on the Benched Pokemon. So I think it's better just to hit the active. So I'm going to attach to the bench. We will attach that active and then we can tag bolt for the next two prizes. And I, I like this play a lot just because it puts us down to two prizes, puts them on a clock basically, 
if they aren't able to get a, a pretty strong board state soon, they will be in a really bad position. In retrospect, putting the energy on the bench was the wrong move. I should have attached that active, but uh, not the biggest deal. If, if I was going for Tag Bolt, um, I should have attached that active because then having the extra energy on Pikaram doesn't make much of a difference. But they replaced the stadium with their giant hearth and they're just going to outrage, which is pretty good for me because I can hit into them with full blitz or with the Vika Volt, um, but probably the, uh, the full blitz. We will attach presumably to the Vika Volt and then we'll full blitz for 170. And at this point, they are in a pretty bad spot. I'm going to attach two energy to Vika Volt just to get them out of the deck means I get better draws in the future. But at this point, I am taking the, the knockout with any of my three Pokemon with energy on them. Plus, if they do manage to remove a bunch of energy, I have the Tapu Koko in play, so this is a pretty winning position. I don't see any way for them to come back from this. They have the boss's orders, probably to... Oh, not to stall, just to take three prizes, and then we will knock them out with a full Blitz or with Vika Volt's attack, uh, Super Zap Cannon. So that is our first round. We beat a Fire deck. And in a moment, we will be moving on to our second round of our tournament. So we'll call the coin flip. We lost the flip, and let's see what my opponent chooses. All right, they're choosing to go first, which is good for us unless we have a hand like this. Um, so we are going to open the Pikaram, attach an energy to the active, maybe we Guzma just to stall, but we'll see how it goes. And we're up against Ultra Necrozma, which is not a bad matchup, but it's just a very annoying deck to play against. At least we are up against ADP Ultra Necrozma, which is going to be less pressure early on, more pressure into the late game. But given the state of our hand, I think more pressure into the late game totally works. For us, in our favor. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to pass. In order to do some damage to me, they would need an additional double dragon. In which case I could Guzma to bring up the other no Ultra Necrozma. They would need a third double dragon. Oh, and they're actually going to retreat. So I do think this is a bad play on their part. I think I open Lone Pikaram and pass. It is always going to be better to just take the the aggressive um, the aggressive approach. But it's also possible that they don't have anything in their hand. Okay, yeah. If they don't have anything in their hand, then maybe the aggressive approach is not the right way to go. So. Um, Ultra Necrozma does need two, let's see, it's two prizes or less in order to attack, but the problem is uh, they don't have a Silent Lab to turn off the Ultra Necrozma. So at this point, they are probably looking for Silent Lab and Energy, and then what I can do actually is Tag Bolt with my six energy in play after I attach from hand to get a knockout on the active plus get a knockout on the benched Ultra Necrozma. And if they aren't able to get another Pokemon down, that does put them in a bad spot since all of their attackers are gone and they can attack with ADP, but it would definitely not be as good as attacking, attacking with the basic Ultra Necrozma. So they're going to use the Luster of Downfall, uh, do 200 damage, discard an energy, and thank goodness we, <laughs> we get a Trainer's Mail into absolutely nothing. So what I'm going to do is attach to the active, 
and I could drop the stadium, but I think what's better is just to use the field blower because then I can replace the next stadium they put in play with my own and ideally have that stadium in play for longer because of it. Okay, so we get an N and a Crobat. I will take both of those. Um, on this coming turn, they need a double dragon energy. If they hit it, they win the game. But if they're not able to hit the double dragon, I probably am able to take this now that I have the N and the Crobat. Because what I can do is I can Electro Power, put the stadium in play, and um, then Crobat for a couple cards. That way I have a Pokemon on my bench don't just automatically lose to a KO active and are they going for the teammates yeah okay so they're going for the teammates uh, that means that presumably they will get a second double dragon energy and take the knockout on my active let's see how it goes though So they're searching for two cards. If they're not able to get the knockout, then I will... I mean, I could maybe hit them with the end, but they would be going back up to six cards, and I would be getting three. So it's possible that I might just be better off trying to Crobat and draw into something like a Juniper, or at the very least another Pokemon that I can energy switch to. They're taking a long time with this teammates, which makes me think that they don't actually have the, the energy in play. I don't know how many are in their discard. I believe it's two in their discard, so it's possible the last double dragon is prized, which is some uh, bad resource management on their part, but we will take it. So they have the lucky egg, attach it to the bench and pass. And with that, we are in a much better spot than we were before. So presumably they did get a supporter for next turn. I'm going to Electro Power, we'll attach this active, and then we've got a Crobat for two. Okay, and we get the Quick Ball, amazing. So I'm going to Quick Ball away in Energy, and probably get another Attacker, a second Pikaram I think is good, just because of the versatility, and the high HP. And then we can double energy switch as well as attach that energy to the bench and we can end but we don't have to and we'll attach an energy to crobat um, we are never going to need more than the pokemon we have in play at this point because uh, any two knockouts on their part is the game and we just don't have that many energy left in deck, so. They're going for the Guzma and Hala. Discarding their only two cards. I am not sure what's going on with this opponent, but it feels like they definitely don't know what to do with this deck. They are gonna get the Silent Lab and the Float Stone and probably just retreat into that Lucky Egg. And then they're hoping that I knock them out. So what I'm going to do now, um, maybe bench the Vika Volt, but I mean, probably not. So what I'm going to do, because I am taking the knockout anyway, I'm going to end. That will put them up to six cards, and then that way they only draw one off the lucky egg, but it allows us to refresh our hand at the same time. So I am going for the Vika Volt. I think that's fine. Uh, we already do have Crobat in play, which will give up three prizes with a knockout. And um, I believe we do have either energy in our prizes or in the discard that we could potentially use Tapu Koko to retrieve. But they've now evolved into the Alolan Muck, which means that Tapu Koko is offline, that Vika Volt really i'm guessing is is just to get it out of the deck so this coming turn we have a guzma we have an n in the discard and we are definitely going to quick ball away 
probably the other Vika Volt. And let's see, they're going for the VS Seeker teammates. They still only have that one energy left. So I think what they need to do is go grab a special charge. And from there, they can hopefully draw into more of these energy. Maybe a special charge and an energy Lodo. That could be the way to go. We'll see what they do. They are taking a long time with this teammates and between their poor resource management as well as the long teammates, it's just making me think that they actually don't have a very good grasp of the deck. So they're shuffling the two double dragons back in. Rescue Stretcher to grab another Ultra Necrozma or to shuffle all three Ultra Necrozma back into the deck and just another lucky egg and it looks like they're just going to pass from here but we have the win in hand we have a guzma to bring up that benched adp i think going for adp in this matchup was a very bad choice all they need to do is knock out two picaroms um and especially because i had that dead hand early they should have just gone on the aggressive and started to do their best to take big knockouts but they were unable to do so, and we are moving on to the finals. Calling the coin flip again, we'll see if we win it. Yet again, we get to go second, so Pikaram going first and Pikaram going second. Very different decks in Expanded. You want to be able to get the turn one full blitz or the turn one paralyzing bolt. So we'll see what our opponent is playing, but it looks like a dark deck just based on the box. Uh, if it is like the dark box with Weavile and Dark Ride GX, that is, I believe, slightly favored over Picaram. The reason being is that they usually play their own Marsh Shadow. We play one too, but when they do play their own Marsh Shadow, it allows them to take some easy prizes due to weakness. And then with Dead End GX, they are able to uh, take three prizes on a Picaram on turn one or turn two. But it is not our Turbo Dark deck. We're up against. Um, it must be just a a dark deck, just a dark box, but without Weavile. So we should Quick Ball and get rid of the energy. That's fine to discard on turn one. Go grab ourselves an attacker but it may actually be better to grab the vika volt because we can take an early knockout yeah so i am gonna grab the vika volt this dino only has 60 hp so if we are able to get the max elixir and another energy in play we can have a pretty big impact on this one um so i'm gonna crowbat just to grab that out of the deck, it's one fewer card that we could see on the Max Elixir, so that's important for our sequencing. But we will Crobat for six on turn one, and we have another Elixir. I should Quick Ball first, and we're getting rid of the Electros. Uh, Peak Rom's fine, but I think actually the Tapu Coco might be better since that is a guaranteed, guaranteed attachment. But I do go with the Picaram. We hit the energy anyway, so we weren't pun punished for that. And we will go ahead and Juniper. And from here, we don't have a very good hand, but we have what we need. Uh, so rather than using the Float Stone, I'm going to save that uh, potentially for the Vika Volt, potentially for the Picaram later if they try and bring it up to stall. And I'll just attach active and use that to retreat. So. We item locked them, and yep, there's the Lysander. So it is good that we held onto that Floatstone because we can now attach the Floatstone, attach an energy to the bench or to the Vika Volt rather, and take the win. So overall, we did not play the most competitive decks throughout, but we did get to see the power of Picaram. Whether it is that turn one paralyzing bolt or a full blitz into a big tag bolt, 
This is a formidable deck in Expanded, and definitely one that you should watch out for if you are playing in any upcoming events. Thank you everyone for joining. This has been Astronaut Gaming, and I will catch you next time.